so there's a section in model seven which is called the simulation hypothesis, which is something very, um, like many people um, among myself have been really concerned. I, I know we have all heard about the, this uh, simulation hypothesis. It was really um, disseminated by, let's say, technological authorities like Elon Musk and all these people. Hi, hi Jeff. <laughs> hi. So- it, it Basically that section was dealing with something that's very interesting. The, the controversy or the two theories or two models between simulation and uh, and uh, uh, the, the unified field memory. So it was just, I just, uh, I just like to come up with these questions because I love your answers. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, it's interesting because even related to the other question, when I was looking at the documentary on uh, uh, you know, for, on Gaia, they were sort of going with the um, Tom Campbell, who's a big proponent of simulation, and he wrote a book this thick <laughs> to, yeah. to, uh, to promote his, his concept of, of the simulation theory. And so many people are doing that. And I just wanted to see what exactly is the differences between the two. And is there really that much difference between the two models? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's a very tacky question. And I had, I had done my question myself, I had the same, like concern, because of course, when you see these many, these very prominent authorities on the matter, saying with such, uh, like, so convinced that we live in a simulation that the probabilities are extremely high, then of course, that's not so, um, I mean, that's, I don't know how everyone will take it. Like for me, it was kind of, wow, that's not so nice to hear. <laughs> like not so nice to hear. It could be, but then that's when the holographic solutions came, like in my case came for my res rescue, I would say. Because at the time, um, you know, I had been working with, um, um, before entering RSF and, and working with, with Nassim, I had been working on uh, neural networks and inter uh, artificial intelligence for a very small, uh, short time, period of time. And uh, so I learned about neural networks, artificial neural networks, and I saw their potential. I, and I saw their extreme large potential because they are capable of expressing something that the normal physics can't which is expressing um, emergent properties. The emergent properties are properties that are not found in any of the individuals, but that you find them as a collective. When the collective appears, then these emergent, property, em, emergent properties em, er, come, come. Like many people have the feeling that consciousness is an emergent uh, property and things like that. So, so that was the first concern. So uh, in, in that case, um, the thing is the following, uh, the, the simulation hypothesis is based on, um, is based on the fact that we supposedly, in fact, I, I think I mentioned that in the model, there's some work from Keen, Keen, it's, it's, a, it's a Chinese uh, researcher who, who finds how to solve all many of the problems that artificial intelligence addresses through neural work, networks, but he does it through a very different algorithm, to the, didn't require, which didn't require that much training. Because the problem with the neural networks is you have to feed them the information at, at first. You have to give them a lot of information to train the, the network so they can get very efficient at their prediction. And and um, so so it's it's not that complicated, and they can they have uh, reached such such developed states that neural networks has been even replacing our scientific models, and that's what's happening. You will see that because if we have so many gaps in physics, like for instance, the gap between the the unification of scales, it was just a matter of time for someone to propose the unification through neural networks, and that's what's happening. So they're proposed, that, that's what Bancheran works was doing. So they, he was saying, okay, um, I'm training this network. I'll give them some properties and I will see. And it was, it was capable of reproducing quantum effects and microscopic effects as well through a change. Uh, there's a phase transition in the neural, neural network. And so for him, it was really very uh, uh, clear to see that probably that's the same thing the universe is doing. And that's, also what Nassim's model says. 
It is, in fact, a neural network, but there's a, a big difference between one and the other one. If you have the neural, neural, neural network as done by artificial intelligence, you won't understand anything at all. Because, you know, you see the neural network, once you have established it, it learns on its own. It, it, it creates the information is the net itself. It's the net itself. So when you start programming the, the neural network and you, you have, of course, to feed Fit it information and it will learn, but it needs to be fed the information at uh, beforehand. So, so that's a, a very first, uh, a first, uh, let's say, difference. So you ha you have to feed them artificially some information in order to their neural network to learn. Meanwhile, in the holographic solution, it's not the case at all. It's the same dynamics. It's the, it's the dynamics of the of the information transfer in space, which creates this feedback, feed forward mechanism that accounts for that, um, let's say, um, learning process. So it is a living organism at, at, in this sense. So uh, that's one, one, one difference. Then the other difference was that the simulation hypothesis was, um, let's say, based on the fact that there's also um, this idea that we are um, a projection from another dimension. So we are projected like, like holograms. This is as another misunderstanding of the holographic principle, because of course, if we take the holographic principle, not, um, uh, not Nassim's, but the, the mainstream approach, we have that we cannot access the volume of, 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 the, of, the, um, of the black hole. So it's, supposed, it's supposing that all the information it's cut code on the surface of the of the black hole and so then you could say okay so then i could have some kind of um reality where i could have a projection just like just like in the movie theater like like in a screen and so everything could be really just a projection which is something you can code and you can you know everything could be artificial as well in that in that simulation and um, so here, the difference is with, with in regards to that perspective is that in the holographic solution, you can account for both the information in the volume and in the surface. Mm -hmm. So in fact, you understand why there's this um, in, uh, tall, this rate of information exchange between the surface and the, and the volume. And that's crucial because that's telling you how much of the information can be really exchanged with the surroundings. And th this is also telling us that the evolution of the system not only is uh, completely, um, um, it, it is connected, everything is connected, and you cannot, like, let's say, uh, anticipate the outcome. You cannot, precisely because of that, because everything is connected, so you cannot program it at first. It is the own choice of the system to, to evolve uh, with taking into consideration all the other uh, aspects and um, interactions that are happening in the universe. Because as you see, the universe, and we will see that with the, the next um, model and the paper that's coming out, everything, all, everything is um, connected through, through this uh, relationship that across scales, which is the holographic solution. Now we will have a holographic solution that's not only um, encompassing, um, let's say, protons and universe, it is also taking in, in, into account every step in between, such that we will have um, a scaling law that goes from the Planck and below up to the universe and beyond. So this is telling us, roughly speaking, that everything is connected. And in my own like, reality and experience, all scales are also concerned as well. So imagine the, the capacity that this system has to learn, to grow, to develop, to, to, to create life, and this is something that it's got life on its own. So the main difference would be between one and the other one that even if this was initially created as a simulation, it's got life on its own. It's, li it's a living thing because it's developing um, a huge amount of information, a huge amount of interactions that cannot be accounted by uh, any, any, let's say, programming programming um, beforehand. And and so, so then the question would be, okay, so then it could be created, it could have started as a simulation and then it got live on its own. Well, well, that's another issue. Um, I, I believe that if that was, in my case, I already, the fact that the universe is a living organism and that it is alive and that we are part of that living organism for, for me just solves the issue for me.
<laughs> I don't know if for everyone else that would be the case, but in case for me, that would be something that it's, um, that, that was a relief, let's say. And so when uh, Vosheran says that we live in a neural network, that that's, uh, that's what the holographic solution says. But this network, network is got a mechanism, it's got a, uh, um, a process that you can follow. It's not just um, some neural network uh, programming that's behind, you know, that it's just uh, doing whatever um, the, the coder is deciding, you know. In, in this sense, we are the coders, let's say it that way. So we are coding and we are creating and we are co-creating and we are participating in this co-participative co co reality. And, um, and that's what live is. And, and if, if, I'm on, um, if you're gonna ask me what, what is live, and I would say it's a system that, it's, that learns, that grows, that evolves, and that participates in its own uh, creation and its own reality. So I wouldn't see that much of the difference at that, at that point. And, um, and uh, yeah, so that was, I would say that uh, Vacheron is correct in, in his statement. The universe is a neural network, but it's a very different neural network from the, from the one he proposes. <laughs>